Hello and welcome to Restoration DIY. After a couple of weeks away, I'm back with another project. This time I make a vase from a piece of yew in four color epoxy resin. So without further ado, let's get into it. This is the piece of yew. It's been kicking around for a few months and this was a good time to use it. I began by gluing on four rough cuts. This was so I could keep it flat and level when I passed it through the bandsaw. I only needed to make one main cut and a bit of trimming, but the extra effort to make the piece stable was more than worth it. And with that done, I removed the timber wedges to find that it still needed more trimming to fit inside the casting bucket. So I did that with a small pull saw. And after the trimming, I gave it a good scrub with a brass wire brush to remove the dirt and any loose bark. That done, it was ready for casting. To begin with, I mixed three colours, that being rose, green and gold, but later on I added another contrasting colour. Each batch was thoroughly mixed for at least two minutes. The additional colour I added was ocean blue. These were left to pre-cure before adding them to the casting bucket. It was early July when I did this project, so the epoxy began to cure very quickly, at around half the time it takes in, say, December or January. So with the rose and the green beginning to gel, I quickly poured all four batches, adding a bit from each to try and get good colour separation. But in my haste, I forgot to add the weight. The timber floated, and when I pushed it back down, the colours mixed. Hopefully it would still be okay, but I wouldn't know until the next day. So with the weight added, I placed the whole thing in the pressure pot, added 50 to 55 PSI and left it overnight to cure. It's the next day and with the casting removed from the pot, the first thing I noticed was a few voids in the top, but I was pretty sure these would be okay. And once I'd freed the casting from the bucket, I found one or two more holes, but again, I was confident these would be okay. So I marked the center, drilled a couple of holes ready to fix it to the lathe. I fixed the blank to the lathe using a woodworm screw and held it securely in place with a tailstock. That done, I turned the lathe up to around 800 RPM and began turning. As before with my other lathe projects, the first thing to do was get the blank to round and balanced. For this I used the Easywood Tools full size finisher fitted with a negative rate cutter. It wasn't long before I noticed some vibration and after stopping the lathe I could see why. Voids and lots of them. They looked quite bad and I wondered if there would still be more to be uncovered but I had no choice except to continue. I switched to the medium sized carbide cutter to begin shaping the lower section and then another problem happened. The woodworm screw came loose in the blank and again, there wasn't much I could do about it except to wind the tailstock further into the base and this seemed to do the trick. Another quick check confirmed I'd got most if not all of the voids exposed, so I set about roughly shaping the blank. 
the lower section was first there wouldn't be a pedestal on this piece i was going for a flat base with a side sloping outwards and round into an undercut rim to do the rim in the upper section i used a 3 8 bowl gouge to form the cutout then switch into the full-size carbide whilst doing this i could feel pieces of resin and wood hitting the back of my hand but i thought it was just small bits coming off the rim however when i stopped the lathe the damage was a lot worse than i'd ever seen at some point i knew i was going to be doing some repairs but with so many cracks and voids i decided to do it now using rapid setting epoxy mixed with gold mica powder i began filling the holes and gluing in one of the larger chunks which i managed to find on the floor i won't show every void being done but in all it took about an hour to part fill the holes in the first pass and then go back and refill them with a second mix once done i hope that would be it for the repairs After the repairs had cured, I used a full-size carbide to gently remove the excess and get the surface nice and level. But doing this just opened up more voids. This was not going well. At the time, I just had to keep going, but having had time to think about it, I think what happened was the voids were formed by bubbles of air coming out of the porous U. This was trapped by the rapidly curing epoxy. So the lesson learned here is that I should have primed the timber with clear epoxy and allowed that to soak in and cure before doing the main casting. This would have sealed the surface, trapping the air in the wood. I decided not to waste any more time on repairs and just get the outside to shape. I did consider leaving the voids as a feature in the finished piece, but they would have been a pain to polish, so I quickly forgot that idea. Using the full size and the mid size carbide, along with a skew and the bowl gouge, I honed the shape, smoothing the outer surface and refining the undercut rim. Once the outside was more or less to shape, I turned my attention to cutting the mortise. To do this, first I leveled the base. Then I cut the recess using a quarter inch parting tool to define the outer edge and the dovetail cutter to cut the dovetail. Then I cleaned it up with a bowl gouge. Whilst doing the final cleanup, the chuck loosened its grip on the woodworm screw and the blank moved. Now I'm not sure how, but this did some more damage to the rim. Not much, but just enough so that there wasn't enough material left to get a decent thickness to the outer edge. So after filling the holes in the lower section, I wrapped packing tape around the blank to form a rough mold so I could recast the top section. This would hopefully fill all the cracks and voids in one hit. I used normal epoxy to do the repair, which I'm not going to show because, well, I just mixed some resin with gold mica powder and poured it until it was full. Then I left it for 24 hours. It's the next day and the end result was, as you can see here, not very pretty, but it didn't leak. The tape took a bit of effort to remove, but once it was gone, I could get back to refining the surface. As you can see, there were still a few voids to fill, but the repair had done what I wanted. The rim had been stabilized. So using the carbide cutter, I removed the excess material under the rim. Then I used the skew to clean up the surface.
I had considered scrapping this video because to be honest the project was taking a lot of remedial work to repair but I decided it would be good to show what happens when things don't quite go to plan and how with a bit of patience and time even a bad start can be recovered and turned around. So with the outer surface back to its original shape, I sanded with 80 grit to remove any high spots, then hopefully for the last time I mixed some more gold coloured rapid setting epoxy resin and filled the remaining holes. This time I used packing tape to hold the resin in place until it had cured, and for the finer cracks around the edge of the timber I used black super glue. At last all the voids and cracks were filled and with the epoxy fully hardened I cut the excess back and sanded with more 80 grit. Unfortunately I didn't film it so after a quick spray with super glue accelerator you can better see the finished repairs. So moving on it was time to hollow it out. To begin with I level the top and then to make things a bit easier, using a 40mm Forstner bit, I drilled out the centre. I was only able to drill down about halfway, but it was a good start. Next I used the mid-sized carbide with a standard cutter to begin removing the waste material. This was soon through the top layer of resin into the U, but this was going to be a bit different in that I was cutting into end grain and the wood was very dry so it was just turning into powder. Once the opening was big enough, I went back in with a forstner bit to cut down nearer to the base. And with that done, I rotated the headstock 45 degrees so I could get better access. I tried using the full size carbide with a negative rate cutter, but this didn't cut very well. It just seemed to slide over the top of the end grain. So I went back to the mid size with a standard cutter and this was much better. Though I had to be careful not to dig in as this could have ended up with a nasty catch. At one point I had to go with a side cutting scraper, but this was just too aggressive and kept grabbing, threatening a bad outcome, even after a sharpen on the pro edge. So I put that to one side and finished drilling down to the base with a forstner bit. I tried changing the camera angle, but because of the size of the workpiece, it's difficult to see what I'm doing. At this stage, the inside was very close to being done, and after a final go with both carbide cutters, the negative rate scraper was great for smoothing out the tool marks, I was able to get the side wall down to around 10 millimeters, or 3 eighths of an inch. Inside done, all I had left to do was the rim. For this, I used a skew chisel, to blend and fair the curves from the outer edge down into the opening.
then are sanded both inside and out from 80 to 600 grit, continuing up to 3000 grit on the resin, and then are cleaned down with denatured alcohol. This was followed by two liberal coats of sanding sealer, each one denibbed with a non-abrasive scotch bright pad. Next up, Yorkshire grit, just a single coat, thoroughly cleaned away until no more residue is picking up on the paper towel. Then the resin polishing. First is Merca Polar Shine 10, a single application, cleaned away with more paper towel, ready for the next stage. Merca Polar Shine 5, another single coat, polished off to leave a deep shine. And to finish, Hampshire Sheen Gloss Finishing Wax. Two coats, buffed to seal and protect the surface. And that's it, another project finished. This took a lot to get done, but I think the end result looks stunning, and I hope you like it too. It's a simple design, but it's the contrast between the U and the four colour resin that makes this piece stand out. It was well worth the effort. Anyway, with that said, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please subscribe, it really helps the channel grow. A thumbs up will be much appreciated, and comments are always welcome. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.